small minutes and uh, and hours that I've put into this project are absolutely worth it. Uh, it's a drop in the bucket to um, report upon the progress of the company. Now in 2023, it's um, much more enjoyable. Stock market investing doesn't really have any type of sympathy for being enjoyable or just downright miserable. Uh, the Hylian story is, has evolved to a place where we are on the precipice of um, uh, approaching and uh, staring down specific catalysts in 2023. I think for myself, uh, staring down those inevitable uh, milestones here in the front half of 2023 is only going to set us up for uh, a much more accelerated movement in the latter part of 2023. As a stock owner in the company, I am absolutely redefining what my interpretation of a long stockholder is, what is going to be necessary, um, where I've put my focus and my focus on my due diligence evolves. It's often thrown around as if you do your due diligence and then you're you're done. Um, I'm as hungry as the next on the landscape out there for the Hylion community that believe in this company. They believe in the cause. They believe in the early innings of momentum that I think are tangible. I, I think you can just feel that, and there will be detractors out there that disagree with um, the direction that that Hylion is going in, and and perhaps maybe even the uh, entirety of this idea that we need to make movements that are proactively aimed at reducing carbon emissions on this earth. I think no matter what your stance is with regard to um, uh, the, the the green initiative or or global warming, I don't really think has a whole lot of merit uh, unless you just like to engage in in verbal combat with people that um, perhaps maybe in its truest sense also want to see what's best for the planet, um, but just enjoy. Now, arguing about the science or the lack of science or uh, the the, um, the the current posture between whether or not we think that we need to address this problem or not. Mine is a much more simple approach, and that is why we would not address this and start to innovate and start to move in a technological direction with what we know now what we didn't have access to um you know a century ago we are in an era right now where self-driving vehicles is a reality with all of the wrinkles that goes along with that um quantitative data and analytics cloud computing the ability to take data extrapolate that data and improve upon what has historically been baked into what has been necessary to drive our transport and logistics space uh, over the over the past history. But looking forward and really looking at who those companies are that are looking to drive this agnostic fuel future, uh, like Hylion is trying to do, um, in light of some political pressure, I'm going to cover what was released. I, I tell you what, <laughs> I, I'm a I'm a kid in a candy store right now. Has nothing to do with the stock run up. It has everything to do with what I feel like Hylion is on the precipice of starting to uh, allow those check marks on the progress toward commercialization to come to a reality. Uh, case in point, I think that the um, the outreach and the social media presence has been phenomenal. I think the release of information has been fantastic. I, even in the light of them being in quiet period, it seems like there was a lull in information going into 
the end of 2022 and, and entering into 2023, and I was quick to address that that is unacceptable. Uh, we cannot continue to march along without having some idea of, of, of what is to be expected in the ramp up to commercialization. A company does not exist without profit. Okay, A company can exist for a long, long time with revenues. And the idea that there is a demand over that product and that they can drive top end revenue to somehow offset uh, the cost of the operating expenditures within the business uh, and the capital expenditures within the business. I think Hylion has phased into putting themselves on deck in addressing those realities. And I think we are about as um, uncertain about their ability to drive those revenues outside of what we feel like is some pretty robust demand from fleets to at least take a look at these technological innovations, highly on being one of very few that are as far along the line here to uh, offer a commercially viable product. We'll talk about that a little bit. Then, then the next uh, a company out there, and there's just a few that we talk about in the space, and it's it's very very exciting times right now. Uh, for you guys that are new to the channel and, and don't know, uh, Hylion.com is a very, very good source of information, but I'll give my shout outs within the first couple minutes of the weekly address here. Um, there are a lot, and I don't mean to be uh, uh, not all inclusive on what I see, but there's also been a ramp up but by a couple of individuals that I've talked about here. So listen, if you're covering the story and you're interested in it, um, my job in social media, I do this for fun. Um, this is not how I put food on the table. So I can be calm, cool, collected about it because I don't give a shit whether or not you watch my content or not. I, I, I don't care. I don't care. Um, I don't care whether or not you buy highly on stock. I have. I don't care what you do. I don't care. My intent is to drive below the surface. And if if that offends you and you're looking to come to social media and be pro provided a yellow brick road in front of you that you have to put zero thought in to just put one foot in front of the other to walk that said yellow brick road, I'm I'm not your outlet, okay? Um, I'm not your huckleberry. So I, I have a unique opportunity on social media with regard to the fact that I'm not I'm not doing social media to 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 somehow um, uh, pay the rent. I pay the rent just mother effing fun. I'm good. My highly on holding would be material, whether or not I had the independent investor channel opportunity or not. I feel like I'm a voice of this ev ev evolution of the company. I feel like I was a rare voice uh, in times where not a lot of people felt comfortable talking about the company. I did. I did. Um, was it fun? Is it going to be more fun to talk about the company when the stock price materializes to a place of of actual credibility? Yeah, yeah, it will. But through this process of evolution, there is an element of learning that goes on in understanding that through social media, we can get to know each other's expectations of each other. And you can have fair expectations as to where and, and how you want to consume content. And if you understand my motivations, if you understand why I do this product and that I could just as easily shut it down tomorrow and have it cease to exist and where my devotion comes from and knowing that that is not even a consideration in my mind because I love doing this project so much, it's an outlet for me. I get to talk about companies and perspectives in a way that only I can. And, and all is fair because I believe that other folks out there that I respect wholeheartedly are doing the same. There are angles of due diligence that are seen through the human intellect in ways that I can't see. And that's the beauty of coming together on a community type of uh, basis and, and sharing those ideas open. 
And I want you guys to imagine that we are emerging into a new era. You don't need to imagine it, but you need to try to share in my perspective and understanding that one of many of the roots on why I do this channel is I believe, and I can dig back into the archives and understand when we didn't have a time where we didn't have an opportunity to do what we're doing now, sharing information, providing on, an, on a company, information on a company that would just be had by somebody who would take said information and look to jump right to scrutinizing the company, as opposed to realizing that if they didn't have the information in the first place to scrutinize, that they wouldn't have a leg to stand on just to always retort in a way that would suggest that every company out there is a farce, Hyleon has no product, Hyleon has no company, Hyleon has no building, Hyleon has no board of directors, and have you believe that Hyleon is just not existent. Um, I tend to deliberate around uh, a little bit more of a um, really real world philosophy uh, and I would invite you um, here to planet Earth um, to reside in said reality uh, in your application. Um, I can look at a rock and say that it's gray. Somebody else can look at that rock and say that it's white or black or purple or green or whatever. And we can disagree on that. The idea and the deeper philosophy behind that is, you know, Barring that the observations that the rock is gray and barring the fact that we don't have anybody in the observation pool that are colorblind and can all come to a consensus that the rock indeed is a gray rock and not a purple or a green or a pink one, then we're starting to step to a better place as a retail community in that we stop trying to cut each other's heads off with regard to these idiotic opinions about a, an equity, a stock, a company that I contend most people don't need to be dabbling with anyway. If you're a non-investor and you are a young person, you have a lot of work to do before you build up what I would consider to be the fitness to have the opportunity to take on the level of risk necessary to engage in an opportunity like this. You can take it for what you will. Ah, you're wrong, Ryan. I can do what you want. You can. You can do whatever you want. You want to go put your life savings into one stock? Fine. I don't do it. I don't do it. It's a stupid way of investing. You want to engage in stupidity? No problem. I'm not your father, okay? I won't apologize for idiotic retail applications when we're talking about the stock psychology we're talking about the stock philosophy and we're talking about defining for yourself a strategy that makes sense for yourself before engaging in said strategy most people don't take the time to sit back and say i've heard of this investing thing what gives and i can help you clarify the necessary pedigree and the attributes necessary to apply to stock market investing and understand that you don't have to go full throttle and put the tachometer at 9,000 right away, trying to win and retire overnight. I'm here to tell you that those efforts are all too often, if not 100% uh, failure rate rate uh, when engaged in, in failing to acknowledge the level of risk that you take on by engaging in the stock market that way. No, 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 my friends. I contend that the best way to approach stock market investing is more from a defensive mindset. You're going to have to graduate to a place and apply your personal governor to understand, yeah, that would sure be nice to make millions and millions of dollars overnight, but chances of that happening are relatively low, and they are. They're relatively low. The odds are stacked against you, especially if you don't know what the F you're doing. So why don't you start by building a, a plan and building a baseline, acknowledging for yourself what your time horizon is, uh, what your surplus capital in life, and then identify how much uh, of that surplus capital you can allocate to a strategy. And, and it's that strategy that is going to mean everything to you if you engage in what I consider to be the best strategy, and that is a strategy that is independent of the system, a, a, a strategy that defines 
and represents what it is and who you are as a person and what you bring to the table in way of individual attributes to deploy in stock market investing. And you have to look. Most people don't try. They don't look. You'd be surprised at what you find. If you look, you'd be surprised at your own capability. If you would just take information like this, like a grain of salt, and just understand that what we're trying to do at its most simple and core core message is to provide information to people that they would have otherwise not been privy to. The power of information is key. The last tweet that I made on Twitter was about the BlackRock increase in position. They've got 9 million shares of Hylion. They've always been a robust share owner in the company. And if you've heard of the Bloomberg report, the Bloomberg report is accessible by the large hedge fund institutions by application. It cost about $20,000 per account to be given information that is not available to the public to be acted upon in a way that can align strategy based not on the unknown rather than known part of my approach does have a a fundamental basis in understanding that i feel that retail investors have been disadvantaged throughout the entire history of the stock market and it's just been until recently, within the last two decades, in the 2000s, where with the internet revolution and the access to information, the opportunity for me to own the same shares as BlackRock is never more apparent than it is now. We've just, within the last five years, uh, eliminated investing fees. We've provided a massive, massive access through the smartphone to broker services, and those broker services are free of charge. So when I discuss coming to me and allowing me to define your yellow brick road for you, um, I'm 45 years old, and if I can give you a perspective of the way that it was prior to me starting investing, you'll understand that that yellow brick road is actually paved for you already. All you have to do is walk it. It doesn't mean that you have to take action on all the pieces of information that come your way. As a matter of fact, if you could be dismissive of most of the information, you'll probably be better off for it because a lot of the information that is out there is propaganda aimed to steer you and sell you on a specific agenda or a specific uh, emotional uh, uh, decision. And the more you can separate from those pundits, separate from the propaganda that's being sold to people every single day, um, the market volatility now is a treasure trove of pundits to act upon your emotional content and with the hopes of getting you hooked on what it is that they're selling to people. Okay. The only thing that you need to be aware of and privy to is what you bring to the table, and it is good enough, okay? You've got guys like myself. I kick ass at this deal. Um, this is my life's work. I have been investing in the stock market since I was 15 years old. Here I am, 45, 30 years removed of starting um, my self-study in investing, and it is just about as ground roots or grassroots as you can possibly get in self-study. This is my passion. Um, I love what I do. Um, I, I don't like things like highly on going down to arbitrary lows based on what I have observed many times in my experience to be um, not market manipulation, but just the um, unfortunate uh, disconnections and imperfections in the stock market that all too often give favor to those markets out there that don't deserve favor and take away favor from those companies or initiatives out there that absolutely do. Those two don't always align. If it was just as easy as picking out a Hylion, 
and putting ten thousand dollars of, of of stock on it and just watching it ride to the moon and you could come on and just share with everybody we'd have hundreds of thousands of investors on youtube bragging about how awesome they are in stock market investing the imperfections and the disconnections in stock market investing all too often define the very environment that we call the stock market. And I find it interesting how a lot of people speak as if they can control the narrative or make sense of that very environment. It just is what it is. And so when you take a stake in a company and you deploy capital in wanting to see that idea in in reality, the sheer reality is that will probably materialize in a way that you cannot imagine happening in the short, medium, and long term. But you have to be there for the ride and allow that uh, story to evolve over time. I want to give some social media call outs uh, for some folks that tune into my channel. I'm always trying to deliver upon what the recipient picks out of my message and what value they can have. Okay, I've already mentioned Hylion.com, and I will mention again the Discord group, which is becoming a lot more accessible to the people who frequent my channel. That is probably the um, right right up there with uh, one of the best sources of information. Um, I've gotten to know a lot of the people who have um, have generated that. There's always churn in the Discord group, and there's always. Uh, a churn in keeping the information fresh and hot. There's all kinds of people out there that are on the hunt to uh, substantiate this product in the wild. <laughs> and I just want to give a shout out to the Discord group. If you're not part of that, you are missing out. Uh, it is free of charge. Um, I don't expect that the Discord group, once this uh, project materializes, it's their decision to whether or not they want to close and make it an invite-only Discord group. But for right now, uh, it's open to all. The conversations are quite good, and there's uh, a lot of intelligent banter going on back and forth at all hours of the day there in the Discord groups. Shout out to them. Uh, the two Twitter uh, feeds right now that I'm the most bullish on and I'm super stoked that a little bit of personal initiative or whatever it was to, to, to help share the Hylion story has taken root and the shares and the likes are increasing. I think that's wonderful. But Andreas Rakowskis and Silent Alert, those are the two right there. Those are the two handles that you're going to need to follow if you just check my social media on Twitter, you can. You don't have to follow me. I don't. Again, I don't care. Um, follow these guys. Support them. Uh, I'm typically in those threads of highly on trying to support. Uh, maybe retweet something that I see that's uh, super useful to the community. But again, if you're intimate with the story, uh, I certainly would would uh, follow those those channels as appropriate. And the next are YouTube content creators. Uh, and there's been a, quite a few through the history of of YouTube. I I feel like some of them were, um, I didn't like them. I, I thought that they were they were uh, doing their work for personal initiative and not necessarily for the cause. I think there's a happy mix to be had between both of those. But uh, special shout out. I've, I've been a little critical of Helion, um, and and that that is probably uh, unjustified. And uh, I'd like the opportunity to walk that back. Um, Helion provided a fantastic offering last week, and I still don't understand where it came from. Perhaps the Discord group has turned over that and has uh, uh, ground up an answer as to where that came from. But uh, Helion certainly deserves to be in the discussion of putting out some good content. Um, one of my personal favorites, just because of the the delivery. Uh, is a lot like I do. You can kind of tell the sincerity uh, from the best I can tell. Uh, this individual is a stake owner in the company uh, in a large capacity, uh, but Excalibur is uh, one of those. Excalibur has been on the channel, uh, which is unique uh, across all of these content creators. Uh, I run an open door policy. I run a Friday live stream, uh, and I've never seen the opportunity of any of these aforementioned come onto the live stream and pop into the broadcast studio. I know silent alert, there's some work conflict there. 
Uh, but uh, it is an open door policy. And, and I would expect that once this story materializes, that we just morph the two products um, and do a Friday live stream. And I just dissolve away with the uh, Sunday highly on uh, address altogether. I know it's a little bit more across the board uh, with diverse topics on the live stream, but it's a wonderful opportunity to come and talk real time, whereas this is more of an hour deliberation around the progress of the company every week. I could just as easily roll that into a, a product, but stand by for that. But uh, Excalibur certainly is in my top um, top picks uh, for content creation. The next is Wall Street Engineer. Uh, Wall Street Engineer so, okay, uh, hitting the subscribe button to this individual, I almost feel like I should be paying for the content. Um, this is the beauty of social media and bringing brilliant minds to the forefront and opening that access up to people who want to consume that. And um, a Wall Street Engineer is is one of the sharpest people um, that I've seen cover highly on, if not the best right up there at the top fantastic absolutely incredible content and he, he really gets my highest stamp of approval if you're not part of that community go over there subscribe catch some of the content you'll understand go back through the catalog of some of the highly on offerings um, very very sharp perspective and then finally one of the original gangsters with me um, and will always be part of the highly on community as far as i'm concerned it's the one truck driver um, that uh, has put out content that I've really resonated with some really early on content when there was a lot of silence on the line. There wasn't a lot of content. And this individual kind of bridged for me through some pretty rough and rocky waters. Um, what the hell the product even looked like out in nature and, and, and doubly to provide a perspective from a truck driver and that's dexter with drive mix game so dmg um you know there's been some evolutions and i think a lot of his opinions and and offerings through youtube were done on his own accord i don't i really don't think that he did it with any expectations of you know falling into a lamborghini the next day after starting i think he was genuine in sharing the message and understanding that um, it was a message that was worth sharing uh, and so forever grateful for the work that's been put in by Dexter and Drive Mix Game. And that rolls out the social media accolades for me. I want to continue to keep the momentum going. Um, the few attributes that I want to talk about here before we get into the week's review, and then we'll wrap up this weekly video uh, on Hylion. A couple things I want to earmark here as we continue to monitor the progress I'm going to start with Jim's interview with Heavy Duty Trucking, one of the best uh, interviews that I've seen, if not the best interview with Thomas Healy, the CEO. There was so much to unpack in that. The updates were rich. The major update uh, on the CARB and NHTSA certification and the collaboration with uh, Cummins in the uh, achieving that certification was one that if you are a highly on bull um, or if you're a highly on hater i, I guess um, you need to catch that content and you need to uh, update yourself on that progress it is ongoing i didn't know that uh, and however long that certification takes i don't know um, it is one of those things that i've always chalked up as being inevitable but not for certain until announced and Thomas Healy said that they were in the process of achieving that CARB certification. Uh, Jim pressed Thomas Healy on the viability of uh, liquefied, or excuse me, compressed natural gas as still being a fossil fuel, et cetera, and still contributing to the, the NOx and SOx emissions to an extent. Um, that was well explained by Thomas Healy. Uh, I, I don't understand the schools of thought that believe that somehow we're going to have a future without uh, compressed natural gas. I, I, I do understand the the concerns, but to reduce the emissions profile of diesel by 90% and arguing that we need to do away with uh, compressed natural gas for that remaining 10% 
uh, of off gas to the atmosphere, I think is a failure to escape thinking and a failure to escape the reality that perhaps maybe the industry is willing to give up that 90% to transition to a compressed natural gas as opposed to transitioning to some of these alternative fuels right now that are not making the mark. They are not making the mark. And I throw electricity in that with the cost of electricity, the availability of electricity, uh, the availability of hydrogen and the cost of hydrogen, both. Um, and I think if anything, uh, compressed natural gas can fill a void to what everybody considers to be an inevitable end. I am not in this camp of believing that compressed natural gas will inevitably be a thing of the past. Uh, I cannot wrap my mind around that concept. I think that people who do entertain that as 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 an option at some point down the line, I don't know, within the next hundred years, uh, are probably a lot more politically driven with regard to all green at all cost. I am not in that camp, and neither is industry. And industry will not play ball with a solution that they cannot be able to be provided uh, a, a total cost of operations over the life of running those rigs in their fleet. It just ain't going to happen. Uh, I've got reality coming out my ears, and that's what my discretion tells me is that I think we are moving toward a more route-specific deliberation and application on the appropriate fuel for that specific route. That's where I think we're moving. That's my direction. That does not support my narrative uh, one way or the other on why I invest in Hylion. It just so happens to align with my bullish thesis on Hylion. I truly believe that that is the most viable and um, economic, feasible solution going forward is to sit across from industry and say, look, we understand. We understand that you cannot make a commitment until the bottom line can be ver verified. We understand that a 10-unit order is absolutely a step into a potential for something greater. But if you don't get the return on value through that initial uh, 10 order, then you'll have more information and more opportunity to make an informed decision on whether or not our solution is for you or not. That scaled in approach right now, I think, is going on because there's not a whole lot of validation in the industry to suggest that Hylion is going to come in and just dominate the Class 8 space. Do I believe that there's potential to grab a nice piece of the market? One two percent. I you know one two percent. We're talking about we're talking about a ten or fifteen billion dollar company. So, you know, do I think that's going to happen next year? No. Do I think that's going to happen in five years? I don't know. Want to speculate with me? Sure. No, I don't care. Doesn't matter. It's the evolution of graduating beyond 10 orders on the books and increasing their fleet reach uh, to the fleets as they start to penetrate and ramp up and really get a reputation within the fleets to understand that. We're monitoring the Ruan trial right now. Ruan is a who's who in the trucking industry. They've been around for, I believe, 80 years. I watched a, a phenomenal interview podcast with the... Uh, uh, prior chief operating officer, I believe, uh, forget if I get my position correctly, but um, he has just uh, joined the uh, the trucking committee. I uh, thought it was a fantastic insight to Rowan and their operation. They are a who's who in trucking. Uh, Hylion is involved with their fleet trial with Rowan right now silently. If you're not paying attention to this information, it's just not going to jump out and grab you. Now, it grabbed BlackRock from the pers perspective of increasing their share position uh, to a whopping just less than 10 million shares. That stuff is very real. Um, that's not made up. Uh, I know there's people out there that would say, Ryan, no, no, they didn't. Okay. Again, you're entitled to your opinion and the rock is pink. I, I get it. I'm trying to dumb it down here. 101 retail investing here for those uh, naysayers that – don't really see that I'm trying to align opinions and not uh, combat, especially when that uh, combating behavior is um, uh, from a perspective of uh, interpretation.
just don't think there's a lot to it. But the Ruan trial, it'd be great to actually see that materialize. Um, the interview that was the most telling prior to the heavy-duty trucking interview was the World Economic Forum, where Thomas Healy, again, in person, not in reality, uh, it best I could tell, it was a real human being up on the stage with, uh, I don't know, Chevron, uh, which is a who's who in the major oil category. And for those detractors that would suggest that that's not a big deal, um, I would encourage you to pull your head from the sand and pay attention. That uh, that uh, was a well-spent 55 minutes, uh, around an hour of deliberation. Uh, and Thomas Healy did a wonderful job of explaining uh, what it is that uh, Hylion brings to the table on that World Economic Forum. A couple of customers here, and we're starting to get a laundry list of customers built up. And it speaks to, in my closing remarks here that are coming up, when I talk about uh, Relidine was spotted in Georgia uh, as one of those um, companies that uh, are enjoying the uh, the hybrid electric version, the hybrid EX product that Hylion has, um, a product that they have uh, and is actually uh, used to propel the truck down the road. Um, momentum moving forward, the product is on the road in a commercial capacity. The product, yet yeah, it's on the road and it's actually working for Relidine, which I hadn't heard of at all, but was spotted in nature, photographed and put to Twitter. Cool stuff. Don't know the insight. Don't, uh, I was going to do a little due diligence on Relidine. I didn't have the time before coming live for you kind folks. You can do that if you'd like. I'm quite certain that the Discord group has tore this one apart as they always do. Um, the, 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 uh, Discord group operates on a, um, on an aggressive ferocity for information like a fish tank of piranhas. <laughs> that was a compliment, by the way. So Relidine was one of those customers. And the most telling video that I picked up on this week was to branch away from oil, oil sands, uh, the delivery of packaged goods in way of our logistics and 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 uh, uh, supplying our grocery stores, things like that. Um, you know, routes that are run on behalf of uh, Publix, uh, routes that are run on behalf of uh, the Wegmans food, right? Um, so a lot of different reaches that we have there, but this one really struck me as sticking out to me as kind of being a bright spot for me for the week. And that is Hylion's interaction with Western Dairy Transport. The telling piece to that was the, uh, the owner, I believe said, I made a point to drive every single hybrid that I had. Um, I put it to the demand and rigor, uh, that, uh, would absolutely stress all of the concerns that I had about Hylion, and I was trying to prove my stressors correct. And he said that he was pleasantly surprised that after the rigor of the initial test of the hybrid, once they took delivery of the units, that he could find no flaw. That is about as good a validation, $3.67, that we can possibly get on a Hylion company right now with commercially viable products out there operating in the industry. In this case, uh, a dairy farm, I believe it was in Texas, uh, but making deliveries, I believe they made deliveries of milk and doing so with the compliments of, of Hylion Holdings that are trying to initiate this penetration to the class eight space and doing so in a diverse, uh, globally uh, um, uh, applicable way. And I think it's just impressive with every new customer that's brought on enjoying the product that no is being a, a, um, a, a proponent of the highly on system in way of people who approach them and say, what gives, what's the deal with this? What is this hill, hill, hill on, what is this hill on product? No, no, it's highly on. They're based in Austin. Here's what they do. Here's what they bring to the table. And more importantly, Here's what they do for us. Um, that testimonial right there will pay forward in sales much more organically than the manufacturing of, of, of said sales that I presume are going on with Hylion. And that's all I will chalk that up as is presumptions at this point on the mark that they are making 
within the sales department uh, with regard to the number of cold call outs that they're making and or the amount of follow ups that they're making through leads that are generated by good companies like a Western Dairy Transport or a Detmar Logistics or many others in the space that are out there flying the flag of Hylion. It doesn't get any better than that. The attention is there to be had in that other people, people are looking for this solution. And I just want to close down the weekly video by suggesting this. I believe in my heart of hearts that I look at these stories here, companies that are being introduced and integrated with the Hylion solution only leads me to believe that the demand is increasing. Of course, the CEO is going to say that demand is increasing. I'm allowed as a, a, a free thinker to come up with this, the conviction that I, I wish to convey to an audience that comes and wants my pulse on where I think this company is going. And I think that the demand is increasing. A feeling that I get here in 2023, and I don't know if you feel this the same, and I don't know if you would disagree with this uh, sentiment or earmarking of what I would consider to be the start of 2023 an accelerated momentum. And I could leave the stock completely out of it. Guys, I've done this entire deliberation this week and not talked about the stock up 50% or however the hell much it is. It doesn't matter. As much as the stock went down, I'm not really that interested in coming in and rah rah after a week's work worth of action. I think just this week over the last couple of weeks and some of the momentums and the social media presence that I have sensed from Hylion has probably generated a little bit more merit to the stock move here recently, whereas before I was watching the stock move on zero uh, news, zero uh, momentum. I didn't think that anything had materially changed, and I don't think anything has materially changed enough to justify a 50% move in the stock, but I spoke about this with the rubber band effect and how potentially even targets have the price target right now below where the current stock price is. And I believe we're just getting started. So these analysts need to get on board with this momentum. Perhaps maybe the stock goes back down to $2.06. I don't know. Do I think that's going to happen? No, I don't. I've sensed that there has been not only a momentum change, but a sentiment change. I think that most people who follow this story as intimately as I do hold at least some level of conviction over this company in that they understand how important it is going to be to navigate the very graveyard that is the highly on stock owners of past. So when we get a little momentum in the stock at 50%, it's going to be expected that we have some back and filling. It's going to be expected that people just say, to hell with it. I, this is, you know, drug me through the graveyard over the last two years. I'm out. I, I don't want to deal with the stress of stock market investing anymore. Uh, I can't control that, nor do I care, nor is my delivery on my weekly Hylion videos any type of attempt to suggest that the stock is going to do uh, uh, nothing more than what it is going to do from week to week, and that is it. There's not a social media presence. There's not a social media presence from Hylion specifically that is going to move the stock. I know schools of thought would suggest that because of this information availability that somehow that could generate more stock interest. I think it's simpler than that. I think an educated investor is going to be much more ironclad to hold the stock for the amount of time necessary to truly see where the potential with this company could, could end up. And I, I don't foresee that happening next week, guys. I don't foresee that happening next month, nor next year, nor in five years. Now, in five years, I expect to be evaluating a completely different company. But at that particular juncture, I'd like to be evaluating a five to six billion dollar company as opposed to where we're sitting right now at 650 to 700 million, which has slowly increased in uh, market cap by a few hundred million dollars silently and quietly. For what reason? To justify a 50% move in the stock? Probably not. However, 
being driven down so arbitrarily low by the stock market that I talked about at the top of this week's delivery, um, it was only a matter of time before this company found its bottom. And I su suggest that over 2023, we are going to enjoy some merit being put back into the name, some real tangible results, whether or not that be the finalization of the CARB certification for the units that are turned out, whether or not that be a real announcement around the ACT uh, mandates, the um, uh, ACT and A. T A M T A T M mandates. There's two, one for the OEMs and one for the fleets. But to see those materialize in nature and actually see the fleets actually enjoying some of those, the OEMs enjoying some of those. Thomas Healy said, look, Hylion's not going to benefit from those, but they will indirectly benefit in that if the sales increase and the demand over the Hylion product is increased, then they will benefit secondhand by having the very solution that meets those uh, tax incentives and credits through the mandates uh, and through the awarding of the ZEV credits that Thomas Healy talked about on the heavy duty trucking interview. So lots of contact to unpack. I don't want to bore you on the weekly video. I try to keep this around 60 minutes for people who want to watch a complete 60 minutes. I love watching highly on content. I really do. And I hope you guys actually enjoy these updates and trying to earmark where I see the, the momentum being fortified from week to week as we watch this story unfold over 2023. But uh, that's all I've got for this week, guys. I really appreciate you tuning in. This was a really cool video. I was looking forward to this one because there was an awful lot that had been turned out, uh, especially this week that we were able to earmark. If you think I've missed something in the progress of this company, certainly these videos do gen up a, a quite a conversation within the thread. Leave those comments down below. And if you like the content, if you like my no BS approach to how I approach YouTube, it's pretty unique. Nobody does it my way, which there again speaks to my independent nature in how I approach this stock market investing gig. I'll approach it my way and all is fair in love and war. All I ask is that you approach it in your own individual way as well. So subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Guys, appreciate you and we'll catch you in the next one. And as always, good luck in your investment future.